Hi, this is the Catalyst Sessions. My name is Bill DeYoung. You're tuned into the St. Pete Catalyst Facebook page or YouTube or somewhere else where hopefully you'll be able to watch this because it's going to be really cool. My guests today are Betty Fox and Josh Nelms from the Betty Fox Band. Hey there, guys. How are you? Good, man. How are you? Great. You're in good old Hillsborough County. You're in yes. Plant City? Yeah. yeah. Strawberry yeah. Festivals uh, probably next year. Hopefully. Uh, ho ready for hopefully, them. yeah. Well, here's the deal. That's all I know about Plant City is the Strawberry Festival. So <laughs> that's that's about what there is. So you're perfect, man. <laughs> Guys, are, uh, before uh, uh, you were going to play something, right? are there any gigs these days? Have you started gigging again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah? have also private parties um, and, uh, you know, like special events. Um, but I kind of had just taken this time to tour a little bit and so I went to Denmark and I just got back from Denmark and I uh, went um, to Texas and I went to Georgia so I just got back and we're getting back into the swing of things and I think we're going to start every Thursday at the hideaway starting in October. Oh fantastic. So, Were you playing over there? I mean that's where Georgia, Texas and Denmark you know they don't seem yeah. to like go together. Like yeah. were you singing in Scandinavia or just kind of ha hanging out? I sang at a wedding I did. I wrote a song and sang at a wedding and it was really nice. Yeah, it was, it was a really beautiful wedding. Well, so you, so the, the work is coming back here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how has the, how's the past six months generally been for you guys? Uh, <sighs> it, Relaxed. It, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, like the way it is for a lot of other people. I mean, uh, yeah. it's been a new normal, but uh, it's, um, it's been normal. You know? Well, I mean, we've been writing a lot. I'll tell you that mm -hmm. much. We have like, we have a new album that we're working on and I have 18 songs to choose from, plus two more that we're working on today. So. Wow. Um, yeah, so we're pretty stoked about getting to choose the best material and put all that on there. And that's what we're gonna be playing for you today. Um, this song, Actually, um, we recorded up in Muscle Shoals, but it's going to be on our next CD as well. We're recording the rest of it at the Hideaway. Mm -hmm. But um, this is a song called Goodbye Austin. And um, uh, yeah, I don't know, I wrote it about a breakup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think he was too stoked about it, but, uh, but I love this song. It's one of my favorite ones on the album. So cool. you want us to go ahead and get into it? Oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I got lots of questions. We'll get there. Okay. Well, I'm leaving Austin right now on my way Ain't turn around the day I know it's too Yes. 
Thank you guys, yeah. man, Betty, I got so many things I want to ask you biographically and, and okay. musically, but the question, ever since I first heard you saying that the main question that's kind of been on my mind is how'd you learn to sing like that? I mean, did, did you just wake up one day and it came out that way? I, I mean, I always loved to sing yeah. my whole life. Um, I just remember just ever since my very first memory, my family had a gospel quartet and yes. my favorite cousin growing up, she was a singer, and everybody would always get together for Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving, and we'd all sing, and that's just how I was raised. So, um, you know, you sang when you were happy, you sang when you were sad, that's how it was in my house. Um, um, I don't know, I just spent a lot of time with my mom recently, and she writes songs for the dogs when she's brushing their hair and stuff, brushy, brushy, you know, like she sings <laughs> everything. So it's just- I do too, I do that with my cats. I just thought I was weird, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, so yeah. if you're, if you're weird, I'm weird. But, um, but yeah, so I've always loved to do it and I've just really worked hard at it. And um, you know, I've, I've studied it my whole life, just like Josh Nelms has studied the guitar his whole life and he studied this music his whole life. And it's just something that's a passion of mine that I love. Well, stylistically, um, because it, there's so much, like in the piece you just did, there's so much gospel in that. When you sing this kind of soul and, and R&B stuff, somebody referred to you once, uh, it might've been a review of Peace and Pieces as, you know, taking blue-eyed soul to the next level. Oh. You're white. That, that's a very strong kind of black singing style. And, it, you know, not not to get into racial things, but I mean, it's, where did that come from in you? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm I, saying? I really feel like soul has no color and I, yeah. and, and it's not, you know, I mean, I think that it was made in church. I think that there's just as much country influence as there is in gospel. Um, and I think that you know, if you listen to, you know, all the early Aretha Franklin stuff, all the early Wilson Pickett stuff, all the early Otis Redding stuff, you know, they had white boys playing on that stuff. Um, and so I think the term blue eyed soul is something that I'm, I, I shy away from mm -hmm. just specifically because I don't think that music has a color and I don't, I think that our souls speak to each other and you can go from anywhere. You can go to any country and play you know, um, indigenous tribes, you know, music, hand them, you know, some headphones and, they, and they'll feel a certain feeling because music has its own language. And I just hope that that's, um, that's, that's the point, really. You grew up in Tampa, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've been around here, uh, well, for, for a while. I mean, uh, yeah, was your, were your first singing experiences, was that in, in church with the gospel quartet? Did you yeah. tour around? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, tell, tell, me, tell me about those years, uh, you know, because I mean, you're, you're, you're younger than I am. You're of a certain age. So, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of music around here. But I mean, did you grow up in the church and that kind of expressive singing? Yeah, actually, funny story. Josh and Elms and I, our parents grew up together mm -hmm. and our grandparents were best friends and they used to vacation together. And um they got into a fight about which was the worst sin, <laughs> smoking or drinking or something like that. And anyway, they were both, they, our grandparents were Bible beaters. And, and um, so my, our parents got raised together. And then, um, so Josh lived, you know, just, you know, down the street. And we didn't even know that until we had been playing together for six months. Wow. that our families were so inter intertwined. Um, <laughs> so, but my, my grandfather had a church in South Tampa called Bayview Baptist Church. 
and um, he was the pastor and um, there was a school there and it was across the street from my granny's house and she made all of the clothes and for the kids, all the uniforms and she, um, you know, kind of made the school work um, and gave them a good curriculum and, and then I would go over to her house after class and then she would teach me how to sew and teach me how to sing and teach me about Jesus and, um, you know, there's music and all that stuff. So it was just always something that was there. Was that what you were always going to do? I mean, is, yeah. it, is there a place in your past? Well, one day I'll go to medical school and be a doctor. Or is it, oh, no, I'm going to be a singer, man. That's it. But actually, I was so terrified of being a singer um, because it was really scary for me to get up in front of people. Um, I used to like black out and shake and have to get like really drunk, you know, in order to wow. do it. But So what but, changed? Uh, well, I, I met um, someone who taught me about grounding and um, about neuromuscular tech, um, technology, like where you, you um, train your body to feel power during, if you make a certain movement or whatever. And, and I practiced that and it helped me to overcome my stage fright. So yeah, I mean, but I, yes, singing is always something I've wanted to do. And I think that playing guitar is something that Josh has always wanted his whole life too. So. So Josh, you're a Tampa person too then. Yeah, absolutely. Down the street. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, for me, like Tampa and guitar means like Thunderbird music and uh, not Thunderbird. Uh, I grew up in St. Peter. Thoroughbred. Thoroughbred, talking yeah. About thoroughbred. What did I say, Thunderbird? Uh, yeah. Spent many, many, many hours hanging there. I, I have friends that worked there when I was 18 years old that I am friends with to this day, you know, yeah. it, it's really cool, man. That, that was a great, great place. <laughs> it was yeah. just, you know, yeah, boy, that's taking me back though. And what, you know, I couldn't remember yeah. the name. It's been that long, but yeah. Yeah. And, and the, all the better, the better music stores were always in Tampa, you know, so, yeah. you know, we had a beach, but you know, that only goes so far. Right. <laughs> can we, can we talk about, I mean, so you guys have been playing together a long time, the two of you. Yeah, nine years. Nine years. I mean, Betty, were you, were you out like gigging before that, or has this basically been the start of things? Was when Josh was in the band. Um, Josh was, I think, my second guitar player. The first person I ever hired was Eddie Wright, who is still a really good friend of ours, and Josh talked mm -hmm. to him like every day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I met a guy named Aaron Fowler, who's a really amazing drummer. He's, um, yeah, uh, I loved the way that he played. I begged him to be my drummer and um, he introduced me to Josh. He said that he and Josh and Elms had always wanted to start putting a project together. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I got introduced to Josh um, as a musician. We had met before, but not under those terms. Yeah. So, but it's just turned out to be really interestingly, like, I'll bring him music, I'll bring him songs, and he always makes it, you know, better than I ever could have imagined, you know, um, so I feel really blessed in that way. You have that connection that, you, the neighborhood connection and the church connection. That we mm -hmm. Yeah, we, you know, yeah. we like love so thing. much of the same music and have a, you know, uh, a real appreciation for uh, a few different musical styles that we're both really into. So we're kind of on the same, a little bit of the same page yeah. when it comes to, you know, being able to kind of, you know, take an idea that she has and uh, sort of make it something you know, cool. That, make it that's, manifest. That's, that's key to a lot of uh, successful musical artists is, is that there is a, you know, there is a collaborator right there that you feel 100% you can trust and yeah. you value their input. And that isn't that, isn't that true? I mean, I'm thinking you know, the old Mick. Well, and, I mean, you know, there's the last more set, you know. Well, I mean, Lennon and McCartney, man. Uh, yeah. Well, there <laughs> you, you know, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, I mean, no, there's, there's, yeah. That I think that that has to happen for any successful band where everybody's sort of moving in the same direction at the same time. But yeah, there's always, um, you know, people within those units that seem to be the, uh, you know, that help, you know, yeah. be the catalyst for it all to move forward. So yeah. we, I mean, we were call you at like three in the morning or uh, hey, Josh, I, I got this idea, man. Come on. 
Uh, it's d it's d definitely uh, happened before. <laughs> usually, she she'll wait till the next day, but you know. <laughs> I usually just record it and send a text. Yeah, but I try not to wake you up in the middle of the night. That's for sure. Yeah, luckily with technology, you know, you can put an idea and yeah, shoot it over in a text and. Yeah, the only one we're missing right now is Barry Williams, our bass player. Yeah, so. he's our. Uh, He's our other right hand. Yeah, man. Barry and uh, Barry and I and Betty all really work well together. And uh, mm -hmm. how long has Barry been in the band? Um, for about five years or so. Oh, cool. Yeah, something like your, that. Who's your drummer uh, these days? Um, well, we were working with Jake Weinbrenner, and um, he he's a good kid, and I don't know. We we're just kind of um, picking up and putting down whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, Betty, what's what's your musical? Uh, I don't know your, your your game plan. I mean, what do you? This is your third record that you said you're about to start working on the fourth. Um, what do you want to happen? What do you see happening, like in a perfect world? You know, in a perfect world. Everybody well, perfect will world. Yeah. Recognize my in immense talent and and <laughs> you know, skyrocket me to fame. And then I won't have to count my pennies when I go to Publix anymore. I, I, I'd agree with that. I think you're certainly uh, in line for that to happen. I mean, you know, can you see working with, a, you know, expanding the band at some point when the money starts rolling in, adding a horn section, you know, yeah. and a keyboard going? Yeah, I mean, well, we, we've definitely, we get those gigs and we, uh, you I'm know, we have done that many times. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, we've been fortunate to make uh, uh, make friends with uh, you know one or two of the horn players up at uh, Muscle Shoals, up at Fame Studios. Uh, some yeah. guys that work there quite a bit, and yeah. that's been a real blessing. Like I have uh, a dream team. It, when we when we hit it big, I have a dream team. You know? Okay. We're gonna there snag a couple of those people from Muscle Shoals. That's for sure. Yeah, they're awesome. What was that experience like? Uh, this is the obvious question. What you recorded, um, uh, piece and pieces at Muscle Shoals. Uh, you know, is it is it literally like hallowed halls? Like, oh my God, I can't believe where we are. Do you, you know? You feel the vibe. Yeah. In the yeah. Yeah. One hundred and ten percent. When you walk in there, and like the artists that we love and revere, uh, you know, have been in that room and cut records and made like hits like real hits, you know, yeah. I mean, real, I no. mean, Aretha had a James Wilson picket. I mean, you know, it dude, that list is long. Uh, and when you yeah. go in there, it's like the first, I would say day and a half, I was nearly paralyzed. I cried. Uh, and then, uh, and then all of a sudden, I, you know, you realize how cool everybody is. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's just the most nice. righteous down to earth, uh, human beings. I mean, you know, we had uh, Spooner Oldham play on our record. Yeah, with us. With you know, with us. I mean, I thought he was going to overdub his parts. And he came and in he and sat while you were playing in the room. Man, we're getting ready to record, and yeah. he just shows up. Cool. Yeah. I mean, this guy's on everything from Aretha's "I Never Loved a Man." I mean, he's on Neil Young records. He's on Bob Dylan records. Man, I mean, you yeah. know, he. We talked about lawnmowers. You know, uh, he, he's, you know, these people are, they're, they're superstars to us, yeah. but they're not. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. Like, you don't get this rock star air off no, of. I, certainly, the more time you spend there and the more you realize that you're all going, you're making a project together. You're all heading in the same direction mm -hmm. and yeah. with the same goals and the same desires. That, that's going to happen. They're just people, right? Right. Right, uh, but probably not like meeting a uh, a Rolling Stone or somebody famous. You know, I mean, they're 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 not. I just think people. they're more. I think they're just more famous to us musicians. Yeah, that's you very know. cool. I mean, well, does it does it make you up your game though? What I, what I'm wondering is, you know, hundred percent. Like 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 Betty, it's like. I don't think I sang that as well as I could. Can we do another take? And yeah. you're feeling like the ghost of Aretha in the paneling or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Seriously. A hundred percent. I took every song t three times and we picked the best out of the three. Um, 
And then, I mean, but everything ended up, we had done a ton of pre-production and we were ready for the studio. Yeah. Um, we had played those songs so many times that it was just ready. We were just ready. Yeah. So, um, and then when we went back the second time, um, I just really wanted Jade to have that experience, you know, of being able to record in such a hallowed place, you know? Yeah. So, but that was really good. And then we came back from our tour and, and, um, you know, now with everything going on, we're just trying to make the best out of it. So we're going to have a CD release party on New Year's and it's going to be a masquerade. Um, because everybody has to wear masks anyway, you might as well uh -huh. have it, you know? Oh, you're the one that thought of that. That's good. It's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's me. Um, and we're going to do a, um, a, uh, a CD release party masquerade for our, our new album called Quarantunes. That's what the album's going to be. Quarantunes. Quarantunes. So, okay. Well, uh, Boy, I got to run with that. That is so cool, though. Uh, <laughs> you're, did you say you're going to cut it at the hideaway? How much of it is done? Three songs. Three songs that we recorded at Fame in January. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you're going to do the rest of the hideaway. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about the hideaway. I, I, you know, I, I, I play a little acoustic, and I jam with a couple of friends up there on occasions, but I'm not really a musician. Is it a, I mean, John Kelly's a great guy and he's got a great year. Awesome. Tell me about why you like playing the hideaway, both of you. Oh, man. Well, I mean, for me, I mean, we kind of, it wasn't long after we kind of started the band that we started doing the hideaway. I mean, we've, it seems like we weren't playing together that we've long. We've done that Wednesday thing for like years. almost eight years. Yeah, every other Wednesday for like eight years and, John is a dear friend of ours. I mean, we yeah. kind of really, that place is definitely instrumental and just- a, a, Kind of like home to me. Yeah, it was a catalyst for putting the band together. It's been a wonderful place to try new music out. Like we write a song or whatever, that's probably the first place we're going to play it on stage. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and John is just a, a wonderful human being and a, and a true friend of ours, you know, not, not just a business sort of associate, but yeah, I no, mean, just like a friend. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's like a, like a really good friend. So, yeah. I mean, um, from, through and through from, I mean, the ambience of the room to the respect that, um, people give the musicians to, um, the respect that the people give us, um, as, as uh, friends, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're friends with all the bartenders. They're, it's just a really cozy place for me. Uh, you know, it feels a lot like home. Yeah. When are you back there? Do you, when do you go back? We're start every Thursday coming up here in October. So we've never done Thursdays before. We've always done Wednesdays, but but we're going to start doing every Thursday, which is great for us because um, we need the money. <laughs> so. <laughs> We need we need to get out there and start working. So um, that that's that's where you can find us if you're looking to find us. Well, the other thing is that in the time of COVID, Wednesdays and Thursdays are pretty much the same as Tuesdays and Mondays and Fridays. You know, every day mm -hmm. is, is is like half the time when I'm doing this show, we're approaching 120 episodes. Half the time, I don't even know what day of the week it is. You know. It's just, mm -hmm. oh yeah, we're still in the middle of this. One last question, and then you were going to grace us with another tune. You talked in the beginning, Betty, about using this time or during this six months time to write a lot of new songs. This is what, how we started this conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm going to go on a limb here and say, those are probably the songs that are gonna, you're going to record for quarantines. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. In yeah. other words, they are quar quarantine tunes. Yes, they are. Yeah. Are they any different? Is, is there a lot of hope and a lot, a lot of forward thinking positivity in them? Some. There are some. Yeah. I mean, there's some heartbreak stuff. There's, I don't ever feign anything. Um, so yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's really real and honest. And uh, we were working on one this morning that I think we might end up doing. You want to do Nevermind? Sure. Why don't you, um, play, why don't you play guitar? Okay. Um, so do you want me to play or? Yeah, I do. Okay. So this is one of the new ones? Uh, yeah, so this one is called Nevermind and it's going to be on the next record. Yeah. Um, but it, 
you know, it would be nice if I was like full of hope and all that stuff. I mean, there are, there are some of the, like there's a song called Ben Don't Break. And it's, it, it's, um, you know, a nice song about, um, you know, just kind of learning how to go with the flow, kind of who moved my cheese kind of song. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I also, I think that, I think that I, I'm just, a, I'm just a person, you know, who goes through things and, um, and, uh, yeah, so I just write songs about whatever it is that I go through. So, um, you're just a person like the rest of us, except you got this unbelievable gift of a voice. So, you know, thank you well, for sharing it with us. Yeah, no, thank you for having me on here. I appreciate you so much. Um, you know, it's, it's great to connect with you guys. Up. What's that? It's just, I was saying, it's just, it's great to connect with you guys. And I, and I really do hope that, you know, once the curtain lifts and we're sort of going wherever we're going, we can do this again, you know, or else I'll, I'll see you guys out live again one of these days, you know, yeah. And, yeah, won't be from the, you know, from the living room. Are we good? Has he got a, an amp happening there? I think we're good, man. Okay, well, take us out. Let's do it. Okay. This is a song called Nevermind. Okay. Love who you are, inspired with weeping. Forgiveness is a stranger who once was my closest friend. And I'm still looking for answers. No one will ever give. Never mind, truth comes with time and I'm on the road again. Try as I might, I can't reason why I love began to break. Never explain your refrain and I'll be on my way. And if I'm wrong, I'll do what's right, so I won't be held to pay. Never mind, truth comes with time and I'm on the road again. Why do you spill my precious secret like water down for Burn my best intentions with a smoky wicked grin. I still love who you are, in spite of where we've been. Forgiveness is a stranger who once was my closest friend. And I'm still looking for an answer. No one will ever give. Never mind, truth comes with time, and I'm on the road again.
Once again. Yeah, that's a new one we've been working on. Me again. Josh Snell, Betty Fox. Thank Absolutely you. a pleasure. We'll see you all in October at the Hideaway. Yes, Wonderful. Please come every Thursday. All right. Cheers, guys. See you later. Thank Take you. Take care.